Canto 7. He who has left his native country sees. As further off he goes, things far removed. From what he thought to find, and when he is. Recounting them at home may be reproved. For telling lies, since ignoramuses. Unless with touch and sight they've plainly proved. A thing will not believe it, thus it comes. This canto will seem strange to stay at homes. However that may be, I have no need. To bear the inexperienced in mind. To you alone, my lord, do I pay heed. Who follow clearly all the threads I wind. And I shall feel well recompensed indeed. If of my labor sweet the fruit you find. I left you with Ruggiero in the field. Beside the bridge which Eriphila held. Her shining armor is a splendid sight. Sparkling with gems of many different hues. Vermilion ruby, yellow chrysolite. Green emerald, tawny jacinth nothing lose. A brilliance in the dazzling eastern light. And for a mount a horse she does not choose. But sits astride a wolf, alert and keen. Upon the richest saddle ever seen. I doubt in all Apulia there howls. A wolf so large, in stature like an ox. No jerking rein with spume has flecked its jowls. I know not if with gestures or with looks. She spurs or checks it when it runs or prowls. A sandy-coloured surcoat, like the frocks. Which prelates wear at court, completes the dress. Of this accursed, monstrous giantess. This gruesome being on her shield and crest. Flaunted a poisonous and swollen toad. As he prepared to undergo the test. The damsels to the brave Ruggiero showed. Where she would gallop with her lance in rest. To harass and impede him on his road. And now with deadly menaces she cries. His spear in hand, her challenge he defies. With no less readiness her wolf she spurs. Behind her saddlebow she crouches close. Her lance in rest she places in mid-course. Making the terrain thunder as she goes. Beneath her helmet, with heroic force. Ruggiero flings his spear and overthrows. Her. And beyond, behind her mount she passes. Landing six yards away among the grasses. At once he draws the sword with which his girt. To cut the head of the proud monster off. As well he may, for there she lies, inert. Among the flowers and the emerald turf. But both the damsels call, pray do not hurt. Her further, that she's vanquished is enough. And so, brave cavalier, put up your sword. And let us cross the bridge. Without a word. Ruggiero acquiesced. The way they tread. Is rocky, harsh and rough, and through a dark. And gloomy wood, a narrow path they thread. Then next along a mountain track they hark. And when they reach the summit far ahead. They come at last upon a spacious park. Where a fair palace beautifies the green. No lovelier in all the world was seen. The fair Alcina from the outer gate. Comes forth to meet the knight. In royal style. She welcomes him and ushers him in state. Within the court where thronging courtiers smile. Upon the cavalier and indicate. By bowing deeply, scanning him the while. How they revere him. Scarce more honor could. They pay if God himself before them stood. The palace, of all palaces most fair. Excelled in rich adornment less, in truth. Than for the comely personages there. All courteous and noble, none uncouth. To one another, all resemblance bear. All in their prime, all in the flower of youth. Alcina's the most beautiful by far. As by the sun outshone is every star. Her person is as shapely and as fine. As painters at their most inspired can show. Her long, fair tresses, which in ringlets twine. More brightly than spun gold appear to glow. White lilies in her tender cheek refine. The rosy tints which softly come and go. A brow serene, of polished ivory. Completes a face of perfect symmetry. Beneath two finely penciled eyebrows, dark. As other brilliant eyes they frame, her glance. Compassionate, will lingeringly mark. The target where love's arrows, not by chance, will accurately strike, until the spark becomes a flame, so many he implants. And down the center is a no so sweet. 
Envy itself can find no fault with it. Below, her lovely mouth, as if between. Two dimpled veils, is set, which nature's tints. As though by cinnabar, incarnadine. Parting to speak, her lips reveal the glints. Of pearls and, shaping gracious words, they win. All hearts, be they as adamant as flints. So sweet a smile they form that in this wise. They open, here on earth, a paradise. Her round and shapely neck is white as snow. Her bosom, pure as milk, is large and full. Two ivory breasts, firm as young fruit, below. Her bodice move, as when soft breezes pull. The waters at the margin to and fro. Her other parts would be invisible even to. Argos with his hundred eyes. But from the rest their beauty we surmise. Comely proportions her two arms display. Long, tapering and slender, as is fit. Her hand is seen to be, and white as whey. No blemish or defect disfigures it. And where her dainty person ends, there play. Her elegant and sweetly modelled feet. Angelic semblances from heaven hail. And cannot be concealed by any veil. In every part of her there lurks a snare. In all her movements, words, or songs, or smiles. No wonder, then, if the brave cavalier. Enamoured is of one who so beguiles. And so enchants him and, although aware. Thanks to the myrtle, of her evil whiles. He cannot now believe that base deceit. Can be concealed behind a smile so sweet. He'd rather now believe that the transfer. To plant life of a stolfo on the strand. Was a just punishment for deeds that were. So evil that he had been rightly banned. And he now thinks that all he heard of her. Is false, by a desire for vengeance and. A spiteful envy prompted. In his eyes. A Stolfo's story nothing is but lies. The image of the maid whom he so loved. Was in his heart no longer to be found. The sorceress by magic has removed. All trace of any former amorous wound. By her alone the cavalier is moved. By her his heart engraved. So, on this ground. Ruggiero must exonerated be. Of any blame for his inconstancy. Within the palace, banqueting in state. Where harps and lyres and divers instruments. Make all the air with harmony vibrate. Ladies and cavaliers lend audience. To courtly entertainers who relate. Stories of love and joyful incidents. And all their art and skill exert to please. With poetry, romance and fantasies. What sumptuous board to feast a victory. Such as was held by monarchs of Assyria. Or Cleopatra offered Antony. Was ever more elaborate or merrier. Than this Alcina caused the night to see. On entering her palace's interior. I do not think that such a feast indeed. Was served to Jupiter by Ganymede. When all the viands have been cleared away. The company assembles in a ring. And there a merry game begins to play. Whereby, each to the other whispering. Mysterious and secret words they say. And this for lovers is a useful thing. Not a few couples, by the evening's end. Agree that they'll the night together spend. Much earlier than usual that night. The game broke up, and guests for bed prepared. In rooms where pages put the dark to flight. By flaming torches which with day compared. Taking his leave of friends to left and right. Ruggiero to his resting place repaired. A welcoming and sweetly fragrant nest. Of all those well-appointed rooms the best. And when with fine liqueurs and candid sweets. The hospitalities renewed to some. And with deep, reverent bows each one retreats. And everyone at last has gained his room. Ruggiero slips between the perfumed sheets. So fine, they are worthy of a ration's loom. And to the passing footsteps now lends ear. Hoping his fair enchantress he may hear. At every little movement which he heard. Thinking it might be she, he raised his head. Sometimes there was a sound, sometimes he erred. And then he sighed. Sometimes he left his bed. And round the door, holding it open, peered. But no one could he see. The hoped for tread. Was not forthcoming, and this long delay. Occasioned disappointment and dismay. 
Often he murmured, now this must be she. And in his mind he'd count the steps along. The passage from his room to that whence he. Supposed Alcina would emerge ere long. And many such conjectures constantly. Did he indulge in, all of which were wrong. He greatly feared lest, twixt the cup and lip. There might occur some unexpected slip. But when Alcina, scented with perfume. Judged that the time was ripe, but not before. And all at last was silent as the tomb. Deciding that she need delay no more. With quiet steps she glided from her room. And, passing down a secret corridor. Reached the apartment of the cavalier. His heart in turmoil between hope and fear. When the successor to Astolfo sees. Those radiant and joyful star-like eyes. With flaming sulphur all his arteries. Are as on fire and he, for all he tries. The golden moment instantly must seize. So, leaping from the bed on which he lies. Her person to himself he closely presses. And scarcely can he wait till she undresses. Although no gown, no underskirt she had. For only in a silken negligee. Over her night apparel, she was clad. Soft, white and elegant in every way. Beneath his hands this garment she now shed. Her nightgown, as transparent as the day. Concealed her rounded limbs as little as. The stems of lilies in a crystal vase. Never did ivy press or cling so close. Rooted beside the plant which it embraced. As now in love each to the other does. And on their lips a sweeter flower they taste. Than Ind or Arabe ever knew, or those. Which on the desert air their perfume waste. To speak of all their bliss to them belongs. Who more than once in one mouth had two tongues. All that takes place between them in their love. How they beguile the ensuing nights and days. Is secret, or at least not spoken of. For lips are readier to blame than praise. All pay him homage, showing they approve. For in her palace everyone obeys. Her wishes and behaves as she desires. Thus all to favor the affair conspires. No lack of pleasure causes them distress. For in this fair abode all joys they find. Two or three times a day they change their dress. For many different purposes designed. Always they hold themselves in readiness. For banquets, jousts and feasts of every kind. By shady hills, or where the fountain plays. They read of lovers in the olden days. Now in deep vales, now over sunny slopes. They chase the hare, or else with well-trained hounds. They make the pheasant rise from out the copse. By beating bush and stubble with loud sounds. Now bird lime spread, and now with plaited ropes. Where the sweet-smelling juniper abounds. Lay traps for thrushes, now with nets or hooks. They probe the fishes from their hidden nooks. While by such joys Ruggiero is delayed. King Charles by Agramanti is beset. Nor would I have you overlook the maid. Who her beloved knight does not forget. But by his absence from her is dismayed. For many days she wept and she grieves yet. To think how he was carried through the air. Along a strange highway, she knows not where. So now of Bradamante I will tell. Who many days had looked for him in vain. Through sunny fields and many a shady dell. In towns and cities, over hill and plain. But not a trace of him she loved so well. Was anywhere to see, for all her pain. She mingles with the army of the Paynim. But none can say what obstacles detain him. She asks more than a hundred every day. But none can give her an opinion. From camp to camp she slowly makes her way. To every barrack and pavilion. Without being hindered, as, of course, she may. Thanks to the magic ring which she has on. When in her mouth, I know that it seems risable. To everyone it renders her invisible. She cannot, will not, say that he is dead. The tidings of so great a man's demise. From the high Dasps river would be spread. To where the westering sun at evening hies. Not the least notion has she in her head. Where he can be on earth or in the skies. She'll go on seeking him till the world ends. Her sighs, her tears, her sobs her only friends. She wondered, should she to that cave return? 
Where lie the prophet Merlin's sacred bones? And to compassion try to move the stern. Unyielding marble with her piteous tones. Till from the tomb's responses she might learn. If he still lived, or if a cairn of stones. Now marked his grave. She vowed that she would take. The seer's advice, however her heart might ache. And so, with this resolve, she took the road. Towards the woods in the vicinity. A pontiero where the seer's abode. Was hidden in a mountain cavity. But she who in the cave foreknowledge showed. Of the fair Bradamante's progeny. Has followed her in thought, and since that day. Has been disposed to give what help she may. For that benign and wise enchantress who. Has taken Bradamante to her heart. What sumptuous board to feast a victory. Such as was held by monarchs of Assyria. Or Cleopatra offered Antony. Was ever more elaborate or merrier. Than this Alcina caused the knight to see. On entering her palace's interior. I do not think that such a feast indeed. Was served to Jupiter by Ganymede. When all the viands have been cleared away. The company assembles in a ring. And there a merry game begins to play. Whereby, each to the other whispering. Mysterious and secret words they say. And this for lovers is a useful thing. Not a few couples, by the evening's end. Agree that they'll the night together spend. Much earlier than usual that night. The game broke up, and guests for bed prepared. In rooms where pages put the dark to flight. By flaming torches which with day compared. Taking his leave of friends to left and right. Ruggiero to his resting place repaired. A welcoming and sweetly fragrant nest. Of all those well-appointed rooms the best. And when with fine liqueurs and candid sweets. The hospitalities renewed to some. And with deep, reverent bows each one retreats. And everyone at last has gained his room. Ruggiero slips between the perfumed sheets. So fine, they are worthy of a ration's loom. And to the passing footsteps now lends ear. Hoping his fair enchantress he may hear. At every little movement which he heard. Thinking it might be she, he raised his head. Sometimes there was a sound, sometimes he erred. And then he sighed. Sometimes he left his bed. And round the door, holding it open, peered. But no one could he see. The hoped for tread. Was not forthcoming, and this long delay. Occasioned disappointment and dismay. Often he murmured, now this must be she. And in his mind he'd count the steps along. The passage from his room to that whence he. Supposed Alcina would emerge ere long. And many such conjectures constantly. Did he indulge in, all of which were wrong. He greatly feared lest, twixt the cup and lip. There might occur some unexpected slip. But when Alcina, scented with perfume. Judged that the time was ripe, but not before. And all at last was silent as the tomb. Deciding that she need delay no more. With quiet steps she glided from her room. And, passing down a secret corridor. Reached the apartment of the cavalier. His heart in turmoil between hope and fear. When the successor to Astolfo sees. Those radiant and joyful star-like eyes. With flaming sulphur all his arteries. Are as on fire and he, for all he tries. The golden moment instantly must seize. So, leaping from the bed on which he lies. Her person to himself he closely presses. And scarcely can he wait till she undresses. Although no gown, no underskirt she had. For only in a silken negligee. Over her night apparel, she was clad. Soft, white and elegant in every way. Beneath his hands this garment she now shed. Her nightgown, as transparent as the day. Concealed her rounded limbs as little as the stems of lilies in a crystal vase. Never did ivy press or cling so close. Rooted beside the plant which it embraced. As now in love each to the other does. And on their lips a sweeter flower they taste. Than Ind or Arabe ever knew, or those. Which on the desert air their perfume waste. To speak of all their bliss to them belongs. Who more than once in one mouth had two tongues. All that takes place between them in their love. How they beguile the ensuing nights and days. 
is secret, or at least not spoken of. For lips are readier to blame than praise. All pay him homage, showing they approve. For in her palace everyone obeys. Her wishes and behaves as she desires. Thus all to favor the affair conspires. No lack of pleasure causes them distress. For in this fair abode all joys they find. Two or three times a day they change their dress. For many different purposes designed. Always they hold themselves in readiness. For banquets, jousts and feasts of every kind. By shady hills, or where the fountain plays. They read of lovers in the olden days. Now in deep vales, now over sunny slopes. They chase the hare, or else with well-trained hounds. They make the pheasant rise from out the copse. By beating bush and stubble with loud sounds. Now bird lime spread, and now with plaited ropes. Where the sweet-smelling juniper abounds. Lay traps for thrushes, now with nets or hooks. They probe the fishes from their hidden nooks. While by such joys Ruggiero is delayed. King Charles by Agramanti is beset. Nor would I have you overlook the maid. Who her beloved knight does not forget. But by his absence from her is dismayed. For many days she wept and she grieves yet. To think how he was carried through the air. Along a strange highway, she knows not where. So now of Bradamante I will tell. Who many days had looked for him in vain. Through sunny fields and many a shady dell. In towns and cities, over hill and plain. But not a trace of him she loved so well. Was anywhere to see, for all her pain. She mingles with the army of the Paynim. But none can say what obstacles detain him. She asks more than a hundred every day. But none can give her an opinion. From camp to camp she slowly makes her way. To every barrack and pavilion. Without being hindered, as, of course, she may. Thanks to the magic ring which she has on. When in her mouth, I know that it seems risable. To everyone it renders her invisible. She cannot, will not, say that he is dead. The tidings of so great a man's demise. From the high Dasps river would be spread. To where the westering sun at evening hies. Not the least notion has she in her head. Where he can be on earth or in the skies. She'll go on seeking him till the world ends. Her sighs, her tears, her sobs her only friends. She wondered, should she to that cave return? Where lie the prophet Merlin's sacred bones? And to compassion try to move the stern. Unyielding marble with her piteous tones. Till from the tomb's responses she might learn. If he still lived, or if a cairn of stones. Now marked his grave. She vowed that she would take. The seer's advice, however her heart might ache. And so, with this resolve, she took the road. Towards the woods in the vicinity. A pontiero where the seers abode. Was hidden in a mountain cavity. But she who in the cave foreknowledge showed. Of the fair Bradamante's progeny. Has followed her in thought, and since that day. Has been disposed to give what help she may. For that benign and wise enchantress who. Has taken Bradamante to her heart. Since she would be the ancestress, she knew. Of heroes, nay, of demigods in part. Ponders each day what she will say and do. For by the medium of her magic art. She's seen Ruggiero freed, but gone, alack. To India, whence he has not come back. She's seen him riding on the flying horse. Which neither by the rein nor with his foot. Can he control. It takes him quite off course. Along a dangerous and unknown route. She knows that now in idleness and worse. He lives and all his time in the pursuit. A pleasure spends, forgetful that his word. Is pledged to both his lady and his lord. So now he wastes the flower of his youth. And in unending idleness this night. Would have consumed his soul and body, both. And that which lingers when the rest is quite. Defunct, the fragrant residue, in truth. Of all our virtues, which, in death's despite, preserve us from the oblivion of the tomb, would have dispersed upon the wind like fume. But that kind sorceress, who had more care than he had for himself, now planned how she might pull him up a hard and rugged stair. 
against his will, to virtue's victory. Just like a good physician who will dare to cure with poison, knives, and cautery. And, though in the beginning he gives pain, the patient thanks him when he's well again. She had no special tenderness for him. Not like Atlant who was blind with love. That foolish sorcerer had but one aim. To keep Ruggiero from all danger of an early death, or risk to life and limb. And to this hope tenaciously he clove. For all the fame Ruggiero might have won. Of the knight's years he would not bar to one. He sent him to the island of Alcina. That he might lose his conscience at her court. Of many necromancers none was keener. In all the wily practice of his art. By means of it he brought about between her. And Ruggiero and Amor of such a sort. His freedom he would never have achieved. If longer than King Nestor he had lived. But, turning now to her who can foresee. The future, both of persons and events. She goes directly to the path where she. Anticipates with wondrous prescience. That she will meet the maid, and instantly. All Bradamante's anguish and suspense. Are turned to hope, but then she hears the truth. Alcina's magic has enslaved the youth. The maid is near to death when the kind Fay Has told her the extent of the disaster. Not only is her love so far away. And remedy is needed all the faster. But he is captive to Alcina's sway. The other where the pain is puts the plaster. She promises the maid that she will see. Her dear Ruggiero in two days or three. Since, lady, she began, you have with you. The magic ring which every other spell. Can counteract, I know that I can do. What is required to bring to naught her fell. Design and your beloved from her woo. You can rely on me to make all well. I'll start this very evening on my way. And be in India at break of day. She tells her how she means to keep her troth. How she will set about her wily plans. To rescue him from decadence and sloth. And bring him safely back once more to France. The maid gives up the magic ring, and both. Her heart and soul she'd offer to advance. The scheme, would any sacrifice have made. If she could lend her dear Ruggiero aid. So to the sorceress she yields the ring. And to her skill entrusts Ruggiero's fate. And many loving greetings bids her bring. Then for Provence departs, where she will wait. The enchantress conjures up a wondrous thing. A horse, one foot bright red, but black as jet. In all its other parts, so great her skill. She summons such phenomena at will. I think it was a sprite or farfarel. Who thus was metamorphosed as a horse. The fay, barefooted and ungirt as well. Her hair dishevelled, started on her course. And lest the ring should counteract the spell. She took it off and slipped it in her purse. Faster she rode than man had ever seen her. By morn she's on the island of Alcina. And there miraculously she changed form. Over a palm in stature first she grew. Her legs and arms she altered to conform. As in proportion to her height was due. Guessing at Lance's size, she chose the norm. Of all the necromancers whom she knew. That done, she draped a beard about her chin. Furrowed her brow and wrinkled all her skin. Her imitation of Atlant's face. Of his whole aspect, manner, gait and style. Is so convincing, she could take his place. And raise no smallest doubt. First for a while. She judges it is prudent to efface. Herself and patiently the time beguile. So in the garden she resolves to bide. Until Alcina leaves Ruggiero's side. Soon, by good luck, she found him quite alone. Taking the fresh and limpid morning air. Along a lovely stream which trickled down. The hillside to a lake serene and clear. The exquisite attire which he had on. Was soft and sensuous, an idler's wear. Woven in silk and gold with subtle touch. By her who held him in her evil clutch. A splendid chain he wears about his neck. Glittering with gems, it reaches to his breast. Two shining bracelets now his arms bedeck. Alas! Once of all arms the manliest. Two little threads of gold his earlobes prick. Forming two rings from which the loveliest. 
Of pearls are hung, one dangling at each ear. Finer than Indians or Arabs wear. From curling tresses, scented with pomade. A costly and delicious fragrance came. So amorous was every move he made. It was as though, to his undying shame. A servile courtship all his life he'd paid. To women of Valencia. His name. Alone remains unaltered, nothing else. So greatly is he changed by magic spells. The enchantress in Atlant's form appeared. In face and aspect venerable and grave. Such as Ruggiero ever had revered. And just such glances of reproof she gave. As from his boyhood upwards he had feared. And she began, is it for this I have? Devoted all my energies to you? Is this the fruit I am entitled to? Was it for this on marrow bones I fed you? Of lions and of bears? And, as a child? Was it for this along ravines I led you? Hunting for snakes to strangle in the wild? Was it for this I hardened you and bred you? To render tigers, boars and panthers mild? Of all this, do you think the aim alone is? To be Alcina's Attis or Adonis? Is this the man whose destiny I've seen? In sacred entrails, stars and points combined. Responses, auguries and dreams and in. All signs by which the future is divined. In which, alas. My years have squandered been. For whom courageous deeds of such a kind. Have been predicted since his infancy. That never would his prowess equal be. Do you think Alexander sank so low? Do you believe that this the method is? A Caesar to become, or Scipio? Who would have thought you capable of this? You are Alcina's slave, that all may know. She makes you wear her chain and liveries. And at her pleasure, everywhere she goes. Now here, now there, she leads you by the nose. And if by thoughts of your own fame and by the noble deeds that are your destiny, you are unmoved, then I will ask you why. You have no scruple for your progeny. And to that womb how long you will deny. The seed from which a glorious company of offspring will descend, a mighty race. Destined in history to take its place. Do not prevent the noblest souls which dwell in heaven as ideas eternally. From taking form on earth and, visible as your descendants, their true destiny. Achieving, nor impede, I beg as well. Your sons, your grandsons, your posterity. Who in grim battles, told in epic stories. Will Italy restore to her past glories. Not only do you owe a duty to. The harvest which your fertile tree will bear. Those many valiant sons and daughters who. Invincible, illustrious and fair. Should turn you from your ways, but there are two. Who should alone suffice, a noble pair. Alfonso and Ippolito, who'll lead. The world in virtue, and all good exceed. I told you of these brothers many a time. And in my story set them both apart. For in their valour they will be sublime. Of your descendants, they the greatest part. Will have in chronicle an epic rhyme. My prophesies of the most stirred your heart. And greatly you rejoiced that there would be. Heroes like those among your progeny. She whom you make a queen, what has she got? More than a thousand whores, that you're enraptured? You know full well what is the final lot. Of all those whom this concubine has captured. That you may clearly see the evil plot. And who it is by whom you are denatured. Take now this ring and put it on your finger. Return to her and see how long you'll linger. Stricken by shame, Ruggiero, as though dumb. Hung down his head and knew not what to say. Holding between her finger and her thumb. The magic ring of which she spoke, the fay. Slipped it upon his little finger. Numb. Before, his senses spring to life straightway. Aware now of his state, he is beside himself. And longs for a deep hole in which to hide himself. And in a flash the enchantress broke the spell. And reassumed the shape she always wore. For, now that her design had worked so well, she did not need it lands any more. The time has come, I think, her name to tell. Melissa, which I've not divulged before. A full account she gives Ruggiero now. Of who she is and why she came and how. 
she tells him she is sent by the fair maid, who longs for him and cannot live without him, to cut the chain by which his captive maid, wound by Alcina's magic art about him, Atlant of Karina's form, to aid her in her strategy, she took to rout him. But now that to his senses he's returned, she wants the truth by him to be discerned. That valorous, fair maid, who loves you so, and who in all respects deserves your love. To whom, if you do not forget, you owe such freedom as you're not divested of. Sends you this magic ring which, as you know, protects the wearer from all spells. To prove her true devotion she would gladly send. Her heart as well, if that would matters mend. Thus does the sorceress her theme pursue. Of Bradamante's love for him, commending. Her valour as a woman warrior too. Affection with the truth, perhaps, contending. Her case, as loyal messengers should do. With every means at her command defending. Until at last Ruggiero for Alcina. Conceived such hate, no hatred could be keener. And now, as once he loved her, he abhorred her. Nor is it strange that he has thus awoken. Since by her spell it was that he adored her. Which by the magic ring he wears is broken. To what she truly is, it has restored her. Of sorcery annulling every token. And, from her tresses to her feet and legs. All beauty's gone and nothing's left but dregs. And as a boy who hides a fruit away. And then goes off, forgetting all about it. On finding it long afterwards one day. Within a drawer or cupboard where he'd put it. Astonished at the sight of such decay. Is more than willing now to do without it. And takes the putrid thing, with mould encrusted. And flings it far away from him, disgusted. So did Ruggiero, when his former lover. Was altered by the ring which, when it's worn. Undoes all other magic spells, discover. Though to her loveliness he could have sworn. That underneath her magic mask and cover. No greater shock he'd had since he was born. She was an aged and a hideous crone. No uglier in all the world was known. In truth, Alcina was, without a quibble. Wrinkled and frail, her hair was sparse and white. And from her toothless mouth there ran a dribble. Scarcely six palms did she attain in height. Older than Hecuba or Cumi Sibyl. She had outlived all other women quite. By means of artifice unknown to us. A girl she could appear, and beauteous. She makes herself so young and beautiful. That many, like Ruggiero, she has snared. But now the ring enables him to pull. Away the mask which has so long impaired. Men's vision. It is, then, no miracle. That brave Ruggiero, who this madness shared. Is sane again. No magic can avail her. And all her beauty's remedies now fail her. But as Melissa has advised, he shows. No sign of his emancipation yet. But to the palace armory he goes. His helmet and his harness thence to get. And when he has rearmed from head to toes. Alcina's mind and heart at rest to set. He feigns to try his skill, which he displays. Like one who has not fought for many days. Next his good balisada he put on. Such is the name Ruggiero's sword possessed. Then took the shield which blinded everyone. Or with acute bewilderment oppressed. The senses of all those on whom it shone. At last thus his enemy suppressed. Its dazzling surface silken folds bedeck. He hangs it, thus concealed, around his neck. Then in the palace stables he commands. The saddling of a horse as black as pitch. This is the one the sorceress intends. She knows how it responds to spur and switch. Its name is Rabicano to its friends. It once belonged to the sad myrtle witch. A plaything now of winds along the strand. The giant whale had carried to this land. He did not choose the winged destrier. Which close to Rabicano had been tied. For the enchantress said to him, take care. That animal is dangerous to ride. She promised she would bring it to him where. They might essay some practice flights, and guide. The hippogriff with bridle and with bit. Until at last he learned to master it. To leave the hippogriff likewise averts. Suspicion from the flight which he prepares. 
In all Ruggiero does, the Fay exerts an influence and guides him unawares. The aged hag's abode he now deserts. That soft, unmanly palace without cares. A gate in the side wall he means to breach. Whence Logistilla's kingdom he may reach. Approaching the portcullis, he surprised. The guards, he slashed, he thrust, he hit out blind. Some he had killed, some wounded, he surmised. Across the bridge he galloped like the wind. And, long before Alcina was advised, he left her half a dozen miles behind. In my next canto I go on to say how he to Logistilla found the way.